Today's video is gonna be a little different. It's gonna be less demonstration and more just conversation, more talking about this stuff. I'm going to be talking about actually four products, um, but really comparing two and then explaining why the other two might be something you should consider as well. I'm gonna be comparing the Aux by Universal Audio to the Captor X by Two Notes. This is a uh, product that uh, I was very confused about when looking at online. That's why I wanna share this with you guys. Hopefully it will give you guys some insight on what I discovered down this extremely long, extremely in-depth journey that I went down with these products. And I'd like to point out that that's how I came up with maybe a third option that I think you should seriously consider that I didn't know existed until I did this. So what I did is I started with the aux. I got the aux first and I went through and I learned everything about it. And what I will tell you about the aux and the Captor X that's really important to know for a lot of you right now is if cost is gonna be the biggest thing for you to focus on, well then there's no question. The aux is $1,500 and the Captor is sub $600. That's less than half. And to be honest with you, I like the Captor just as much as the aux and at half the price, go for that. But if you wanna see why, keep watching. Now that being said, they're different products and here's why I'm saying that. They basically pick different roads to go down. Where I think the aux guys, Universal Auto sp Audio, spent more time with the physical features in the product. In other words, uh, on the attenuator, you have five positions, zero being off. On the Captor X, you have two. It says three, but it's really two because obviously the third one is just full blast, which is like it's not on. Then you have a halfway mode and a quarter mode, and that's it. If you want off, in other words, if you just don't want to hear your cabinet, you have to unplug the cabinet from the back of the captor, which you're allowed to do because it's a reactive load, and run a line out to record or run to your front of your, uh, your audience and that's what you get. So it's not as convenient as just having a dial in the front, okay? So, so automatically the aux wins there. Also, the aux on the back has the ability to go from four to eight to 16 ohms, and you can just change that up, where the Captor X, you have to purchase a 16 or eight ohm unit, and uh, you have to figure out which one's right for you and why that works. There's, there's information on their website that explains. I went with the eight ohms. That's one I recommend for most people for a ton of reasons, but again, if you need to know more reasons why, again, read their information on their website. So again, a little less in the feature area there. So other than that, they both basically have the ability to do headphones. They both have uh, presets. Both of them come with those presets. So again, the out of the box, you plug in, you go, you're getting great sounds. Both of them have built-in uh, effects. I personally think the Universal Audio reverbs are a little fuller, lusher, more premium, sound a little better. A little bit, a little bit. Again, a little, little programming, a little editing. Maybe you can change that. One of the things I wanna tell you about the Universal Aux, which is a big thing that I think that's important. I'm gonna use an analogy, and again, this is video is gonna be a lot of opinion, so if you don't like it, just put comments down below. Get it out of your system. <laughs> I kinda of like an Aux Universal Audio, this unit, to Apple products. I like Apple products, some of you guys don't, but Apple products to me have a cool feature and a big drawback. One of the features is it's kind of user interface easy. In other words, if you're not a big computer person, you just turn them on and kind of they do their job. The Aux is kind of like that. It's like if you're, you know, you just turn it on and it kind of does its thing. However, just like an Apple product, not only is it very expensive, in fact, more expensive than its competitors, it also is very limited in what you can do. One of the things that sucks is it has a power supply that's this weird XLR looking cable and it's proprietary. That's a little concerning. Where not only does this use a normal 12 volt power supply, you can use any pretty much 12 volt power supply. Just look at the specifications. You can use one off your pedal board. Again, kind of like PC versus Apple, a lot of flexibility on the captor side. You can download your own uh, IR impulse responses and, and input them in. You cannot do any of that. You're stuck with whatever Universal Audio gives you, although what they give you is pretty fantastic. The other issue is it has a weird way of doing things. For instance, to, to program this, you have to get a, an iPad or some kind of tablet and then I, I go on, you go on Wi-Fi. It doesn't like Bluetooth connect that way. So it has to, you have to jump on a, like a Wi-Fi and, and do that stuff. And again, not deal breakers by any means. Just I'm, I'm just letting you know some of the issues that they have you dealing with and the Captor guys really don't have you dealing with this. This is very easy to plug into your computer, work with their interface, 
move stuff around, add cabs, add mics, you can do whatever you want. It just works pretty straightforward. They both have essentially like this on the uh, universal, it's gonna be this uh, room knob. This one has like a voicing and a space knob. And again, they allow you to kind of change things up just a little bit. I kind of like this voicing knob on the on the two notes way better um, because sometimes I'm like, oh, it's a little bright. Instead of adjusting the amp, I can just go right to this and kind of brighten it up or darken it up. It's a little, really cool. This one, you can't do that. You know, you're just stuck with what you have. So again, uh, more interface, more thought like a PC kind of concept, more thought about the user will know what they're doing let them have at it. One of the things on the back of this unit is you're gonna have XLR outs where the aux is only gonna have quarter inch outs. Both of those are actually kind of irritating. I wish both of them could just do those combo outputs that are XLR and quarter inch. You would think with the, with the price of aux, you think they could have got those in there and kind of won in that category. Here's the important part. Yes, they can sound very similar. That's why a lot of reviews I watched, uh, even comparing them, they did the same thing I'm doing, which is not really A being the sound. Here's why. Uh, you kind of spend some time getting the sounds you want and they're gonna sound slightly different than each other. That's just how it works. And it's not necessarily a bad or good. It's just not. I like both of them and I don't prefer one over the other when it comes to the way they sound. However, I do prefer one over the other in the way it feels, which is the Captor X. I prefer the Captor X over the aux in the way that it feels. The reactive attenuator on the back, either although it's limited in its features of being having more positions, just the sound and feel in the room of the amp when you put it like on halfway mode versus this at halfway mode, it's different. This feels more like the traditional attenuators we're used to where it darkens the amp a little bit and the amp doesn't feel the same as it did. Uh, that it did before, before it was plugged into another out external unit like the attenuator, where the captor is kind of right there. It just feels good. You hit a chord, and this really is important for overdrives and heavy distortions. I'm gonna, I don't wanna pigeonhole these units, but I can definitely tell you, if you're really into just doing clean tones all the time, I think the aux is not only beautiful sounding, it's, uh, it's, uh, it works really good. Where the distortions and the complex sounds, the aux to me sounds fantastic, but again, it's a very, like this is how it sounds, even though it sounds good, it may not be exactly what you're thinking, it's you know what you want it to be. With the captor, again, if you have a great sounding amp and you just want the world to hear that amp, the captor is gonna help you do that. Where Aux is gonna try to color the sound of the amp in a positive way, but again, not give you exactly the transparent sound you're looking for. I think the Captor X out of the box sounded pretty good, but it really needed a little bit of tweaking and then it was fantastic. In fact, it was like said at the beginning, I was like, I don't know, does it sound as good as the Aux? And then you mess with it. And as soon as you get some impulse response in there that you love, you're like, nope, this is better. <laughs> Where again, the Aux is kind of like, yeah, out of the box, it's gonna sound good. Both of them are not fantastic attenuators, in my opinion. And that's okay for me because I want them to record into my interface on my computer, or again, go into a live PA system. I want people to hear what I'm hearing and kind of have an easier process to do that. Kind of, kind of make your workflow faster than having to mic everything up and go through all this. Now, that being said, some of you may not need that. Some of you just probably in the bedroom are like, hey, I just wanna get my amp a little quieter and have a great tone. That's why I purchased an Iron Man 2 to try a theory and I was absolutely right. So the Iron Man 2 is by T Tone King. There's two versions. There's a 30 watt unit that runs about $350 to $400 and a 100 watt unit that runs about $650 to $750. I bought the 100 watt because for the channel I thought, well, if I ever wanna use all the amps, I have something to cover it. This is a fantastic attenuator. In fact, it uh, does also reactive like the captor. I think it's everything the captor on 10 when it comes to attenuation. So before I would use this just as an attenuator into my amp all the time, I would go with the Iron Man 2 if that's all you think you're gonna do. Now the Iron Man 2 unit has a direct out and this one has like a cab simulation unit. But again, it's not on the, it's not on the level these guys are at. But you can buy the Cab M and some of you already have. I reviewed this and a lot of you guys bought the Cab M. So this is what I want to get to you. As you guys know, if you have the Cab M, you can run pedals into it and re record them, you know, run them into an interface. You can run your amplifier through it, but you cannot attenuate it. Well, guess what? If you have this already, before I would recommend the Captor X or this, 
I would say go ahead and get one of these reactive load Ironmans, either 30 watt or 100 watt. And you can do it one of two ways. You can run your, your amp into this, out of the amp into that, and then attenuate to the speaker. Or you can run it into that, and into this, <laughs> and then into the speaker, it doesn't matter. Either way, it basically gives you all of the amazing attenuation, uh, which is not only all of this variable switching that you have here, but both of them have a solo mode. So you can boost, you know, if you wanna hit a solo, you have a foot switch to boost the solo. Again, very, very, I love the uh, the DB cuts. I love the range, the high-low range. I love everything about this attenuator, far superior than both these units. And again, if that's all you need, you don't need the recording, I would go with that. But again, if you do later want the recording, if you don't already have this unit, you can buy the cab in, add it to the, to the Tone King Iron Man 2, and you're set. <laughs> And keep in mind, at $700 for this unit, $400 for this unit, you're still under the aux. And, and if you do have a smaller wattage amp, like 30 watts, uh, you could get that unit, $400 and $400, $800, just about $200 more than the Captor X. And again, you're gonna have a lot of features. The only thing you won't have is convenience of having a one, you know, kind of stop shop all in one model. Again, I appreciate you guys hanging out for the video. I hope this information was really good or interesting for you. I hope it helped you decide what you have, what you need, and again, maybe help you go down the road of what to check out next. As always, thank you guys. Until the next time, know your gear. Today's viewer shout out goes to Ari, who sent us a great picture of him at John Petrucci's Guitar Universe 3.0. And thank you again so much for this photo. I actually sent it to his manager, so hopefully John will get to see it as well. 